All right, greetings and welcome. Well, I guess we haven't cut back or anything. Or we, or rather, we cut between episodes because uh, when you beat the final boss, it saves the game. And I just wanted to make sure that uh, just wanted to make sure that I had gotten every or that everything was a okay with the footage and stuff, so that I wouldn't have to redo anything. But yeah, and one thing I just noticed, just looking at the ship right now, is that uh, the sprite for Gangplank ba Galleon actually has Crow's Nest up at the top of it. If you've played the second game, then you would know what I'm referring to. The first boss in that game, uh, you fight it up on the Crow's Nest, and there's actually a nest with eggs in it in reference to that boss, so that's kind of cute. Uh, but at any rate, we're, we're gonna take on King K. Rule at long last, the mastermind behind the banana theft. And as you can see, uh, he's a big fat crocodile, and uh, one thing I haven't mentioned is that many of the voice clips used in this game are actually lifted uh, straight out of Donkey Kong 64, which is kind of interesting. Uh, this boss was actually made a little bit easier for this version. Uh, I mean, it's an okay final boss, I guess. He he just... You, and I'm sure you'll pick this up uh, eventually, but he has this lovely habit of basically deciding he wants to do this one move and then basically repeating that uh, several rounds except adding another hit each time. It's it's conquer difficulty is what it is. You know how like and conquers bad fur day with the bull section. Uh, the first cow that you hit you only need to hit him once or hit her rather and then the remaining cows add a hit for each one. That's the same logic for King K rule here. Uh, for example uh, he did that running attack three times adding an extra run by each time, and now he's doing his cannonball attack. That shouldn't have hit me, because it was in the foreground. What is this, the Death Egg Robot? With things that are in different planes hitting me when I'm in the middle plane? Uh, but... That means he does his crown attack three times. Actually, actually no, he does the crown attack after every, after every round, and that's when he becomes vulnerable. Uh, now he's decided he wants to run, so he's gonna run across once. And now he's gonna run across twice. A very predictable boss, and you know, uh, Captain K. Rule in the second game kind of does that, but there's a, there's better escalation to it. It's not just doing the same action except doing multiple instances of that of that action each time. It's like, okay, now he's he's shooting uh, the cannonballs in a swirl formation. You know what I mean? There's a better escalation to that fight, and it doesn't just feel like the same thing as... Like, seriously, that, that thing was in the fucking foreground. How did that hit me? I think they might have made it a little bit... It might actually be a little harder to dodge those in this version. So I, I feel like the timing wasn't as picky in the old... So you gotta... You gotta get in really... You gotta really nail the timing on this. There we go. And so that's that's the second round of the cannonball attack done. So now Captain K. Rule or King K. Rule rather is gonna like seriously that was in the foreground. How did it hit me? Like what what is the timing that they expect me to do here? All right, jump, bop on, bop him on the head once again. Hit him again. Ugh, I mean, there's not- there's not too much to say. It's a very- it's a very... unnecessarily long final boss, in my opinion. Uh, this is probably the weakest final boss of the trilogy, actually, now that I think about it. Because I- 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 I rather like Baron K. Ruhlenstein. I'm not a huge fan of this, so... Yeah. Oh, spoilers for Donkey Kong Country 3. Ah, whatever. You guys don't care. Yeah, I, I, they must have made the timing on this a little harder, because... Well, that's what I get for not paying attention. Hashtag Let's Play Curse. Alright. Uh, do I, do I want to make you guys sit through this again? I don't know. We might as well show them off, because... I don't know, if I die again before I reach farther in the fight, I'll just speed up the footage or something, because you guys don't need to keep seeing this over and over again. Ugh, okay. Brown time. He has a lot of animation frames, doesn't he? 
Yeah, but all the sound effects are lifted straight from Donkey Kong 64. Like, if you've- if you fought King Crush of Rule in Donkey Kong 64, you will recognize a lot of the sound effects that play in this game. And I guess they were trying to- they were trying to make it more like that game to- to be more cohesive, because this- that was the last, uh, Donkey Kong game that Rare had published up to when this- this, uh, I- I know, I guess besides the- the GBA version of, uh, or G Game Boy Color version, rather, of Donkey Kong Country 1. Yes, they were trying to make it more consistent with the newer games. They wanted a sound direction that was closer to that. So I think now we're on to round three of the Cannonball Attack. Yeah, they definitely made that tighter. Or maybe I'm just imagining things, but I swear that this, att this attack is harder to dodge now. Uh, but that should just about do it. That's round three of Cannonball time. And with that, we have completed Donkey Kong Country, and here are the credits. Coding was done by Claptrack, characters by Crusha, coloring by Critter, concept by Clump, and commander is King K. Rule. The end, question mark? No, we still have a bit of a ways to go, and actually, in this version of the game, you get a checkpoint up at that point. In the original version of the game, if you died at this point, you had to redo the entire fight all over again. Uh, but, you know, I think this is actually a little easier to dodge than the cannonball attack. He'll jump in very set intervals. Uh, use, especially if you have Diddy, then you can just roll on under him. And as you can see, each time he, each time he crosses the screen, his hops get closer together. And yeah, and there we go. There we have our last script of photo and the last banana in the banana horde. We are done. We are done Donkey Kong Country, ladies and gentlemen, as the ca Canadians would say it. What a play, DK, my lad. You beat the Kremlings and found everything. You're nearly as good as I used to be. And that's all you get for getting 101%. Uh, but... Yeah, so this- the ending in this version is very different from the original. Uh, it feels- it feels more like Donkey Kong Country 3's ending, which is what I think I was trying to allude to uh, in that earlier part where I was- where I, uh, wrongly stated that the first two games on SNES did not have an enemy parade. They did. It was just more like you had, like, a flat rendered screen. I think it was in DK's house, actually, and then the, the uh, enemies would just kind of walk on by. Here, everything's on the deck of the Gangplank Galleon, which I really enjoy. And it's just, I, I, I like these. Like, uh, the one in Donkey Kong Country 3 is, like, paced horribly and goes on way too long, but this one I rather like. It's because, you know, it just, it keeps going. You get to find out what the name of all of your favorite, least favorite enemies were, as you can see. They're actually six different kinds of zinger. Uh, the Kremlings and the Karts occurred crash. I actually didn't remember that. Uh, that's how I knew about the Mankey Kongs. I like the little animations they added for this, too, because it's... Because in the original, they just do their idols, so... So they add, like, little animations of, like, the enemies fighting with each other and stuff, and I think that's cute. And, uh, in terms of the, uh, the ocean dwellers, they actually go below the, the, uh, the deck of the ship and into the water to show those off, which I thought was... I thought was a nice touch. And so, yeah, now the chomps are, are chasing the squidges, and now the prey has... the hunter has become the prey. Like, it's cute! I like that! It's, it's a nice little touch. And then you have Chomps Jr. And... Clambo, like, what what kind of name is that for that enemy? Is it supposed to be a reference to Rambo? I don't get it. Croctopus, and you know what I was thinking? If you have multiple Croctopus, shouldn't they be called Croctopi? Because, uh, in one of the fishing challenges, they, they called them Croctopus, with like a apostrophe on it. Anyway, very- now we're getting into the bosses. Yeah, Master Neki Jr. Who still can't stop spitting his nuts. We have Queen Bee. It's a, it's a nice little thing for beating the game, and I, I like it. It's it's one of those little it's one of those little touches that Rare put into all their old games. Uh, you know, especially that I feels like missing. 
uh, from the Retro Studios games. They, there's, there's a charm to these Rareware entries that, you know, the new games have their own charm, but, you know, you can, you can definitely kind of tell. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I like, I like Returns, I like Tropical Freeze. Uh, but there is something about the original trilogy that they don't quite capture. And I don't mean that as a bad thing, because they have their own charm, they have their things that I like better in Returns of Tropical Freeze. Um, but, you know, there's something about these games that they couldn't quite replicate. And I guess I'll get more to that as we go along, because we still have two more games to cover after this. Uh, before we get to the Returns series anyway. Anyways. Now that's all sorted, I'm going back to sleep. You lazy ape! You're getting too old for this! You've done a great job, guys. Yeah, wicked man! This sea air is doing me no good at all. Make yourselves at home. Can you rule? Right, I've had enough of this. It's time for me to get going. So you Kongs better get off my boat, or else... Or else what? I'll destroy DK Island. <laughs> You're bluffing, lizard face. I don't think he is, sugar. Let's get off this manky ship. I'm too old for this. See ya. I'm bailing out, dudes. We will meet again, K. Rule. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'll be back. Call that an ending? Seems like a cheat stunt setting up the story for the sequel. I like the little miniaturized versions of all the sprites in the water. I, I like that they bothered to add like an end cutscene like that, because in the in the original game all that happens is Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong go back to their house and then they start basically uh, play fighting with each other, which is cute. But I feel like this this does a better job ending the game, if that makes any sense. But yeah, that was Donkey Kong Country on the Game Boy Advance, and what can I say that I haven't already said in my review? Well, evidently a lot of things, but this, I, just in terms of Donkey Kong Country in general, uh, I love this game. I think it's, I think it's a fantastic platformer, and I think this game, the, this game and the second one in particular really illustrate probably the best of uh, of all the games I reviewed what I'm looking for in a 2D platformer. Um, you know, I kind of alluded to Sonic Mania earlier, and you know, I was playing that, and it's just the level design just doesn't do it for me. 2D Sonic level design doesn't do it for me. I don't understand what it is that people find so appealing about that kind of level design and that's because i will always prefer something that's simple and straightforward over something that's got a million pathways and makes me feel like i'm lost all the time even though i'm not technically lost and the game does a, you know, like the game does a good job funneling you towards the goal but it's it's i don't feel like i want to explore it because it's too big and open and i feel like there's too much going on what I like about Donkey Kong Country in particular, especially this first one, which is probably the simplest of the bunch, is how straightforward and simple it is. I could pick up this game and plow through it any day of the week. I just, I love it. I like its simple, straightforward challenge, reasonable difficulty, creative, memorable enemies and characters, excellent music, and a side quest that I think that is well paced, and I think uh, worth your time because uh, you know obviously you're gonna get a bunch of lies from doing that. It's not perfect. I do think that some of the bonus rooms are are a bit obscure. Even even as someone who likes blue coins, that's coming from me. Um, and I feel like, I uh, you know just in terms of comparing this to the games to come, I do feel like uh, later games fleshed out on some of the concepts here a little bit more. Uh, but that being said, this game only seems to get better every time I play it, 
like I find new things to love about it. Uh, I didn't used to think this didn't used to be one of my favorite Donkey Kong Country games. It used to be dead last for me. Uh, but nowadays, in an era where DKC3 is worn out its welcome with me, and I have quibbles with the Retro Studios games, I, it's it's moved up in the world for me a little bit, and I I feel I feel a lot because it it was getting to the point where I felt like maybe DKC2 was the only one I really really loved. But coming back and playing this again, I've I've seen that I know that there will always be a place for Donkey Kong Country One in my heart. And I absolutely love this game. Uh, if if you have not played this game already, I highly recommend playing it on GBA specifically. Uh, for the improved save system and for all the extra goodies that I showed off in this playthrough, I think that you will have uh, a far more enjoyable time with this version than you will with the original. Uh, the original version is not bad, obviously, and it does have the better graphics for sure, uh, but the save system, I think, is gonna, not going to make it as, as accessible. So, GBA version, I think, is the better one to go with. And yeah, so as you can see, we unlocked Hero Mode for getting 101%, but because I've already beat this game with the 100% 101% file, that's already something that's available. And you know, I might as well show that off real quick, I guess. Uh, seeing as we're already done and the game has saved. I'll delete my uh, practice file and show that off to you guys. Uh, but we gotta wait for the title screen to go in first. Oh! A couple other things I should show off. Before we go. Actually, yeah, how about we'll have a bonus episode. It'll be really quick, and I'll show some of the stuff that, uh... Yeah, so that's the end of this finale. If you want to see some of the extra stuff, tune in next time for the bonus episode.